But you, you know, these kids of today, they've got it easy, don't they? They have it easy, these kids, because you know what? Today, the parents, if they hit a child, the children are taught and told that if they get touched, they are allowed to call the police. (laughs) We didn't have that privilege when we were growing up, did we? And we needed it the most. Can you imagine doing that? You know what? It's a very cathartic. It's very therapeutic. All right, let's all tonight, right? Let's all just imagine, go back to that time you got the worst beating, right? And just before your dad or your mum's about to hit you, you can just say, <laughs> time out. Tu non mi puoi toccare. Because if you touch me, I'm going to call the police. <laughs> Why isn't anyone laughing? <laughs> Imagine that, eh? I'll call the police, Dad. <laughs> Como? Che <laughs> dicesti che chiama polizia? Te, chiama. Chiama! Vuoi che ti faccio io un numero? Chiama la polizia, chiama, chiama. E dopo chiama l'ambulanza. Thank you very much, Montreal! Now, if you don't believe me that you can't win with an Italian mum after that story, you will after this one. Now, I hate Pasta Prisella, right? Pasta with P. Anyone with me on that one? Yeah? Okay. Now, I hate Pasta with peas, and I, my mum knows, don't cook it for me, don't even put it near me, I hate the smell of the thing, all right? We go to, again, the Gente Justice house. Doesn't the Kumari put pasta preseda there? And don't I have to eat it? Because I don't want to do brutta figura. <laughs> Folks, you would be proud of me. I finished that pasta preseda. Not one preseda, not one bit of pasta left. I had some water, some bread in between each mouthful. I finished the pasta preseda. We get home, the door doesn't even close. Pa! Copper smack in the face. And you want to know why, my mum? A me and a man, you make a while the latrice here. But here's another, um, here's another classic story, and I love telling this one here. Italians when they get something in the mail or they get a letter, they kind of make up their own version of it, don't they? You know, their own interpretation of what it says. And true story, right? It happened to a friend of mine's father in New York. See, in America, when you get fined or commit a traffic offence, you don't actually write a cheque and send it to the government. You actually have to go to court to plead guilty or not guilty. So, my friend's father commits a traffic offence and he goes to court, but he doesn't say anything to anybody because, you know, sometimes the young kids, we, we get upset with the nonni. So he goes there, he gets a letter, and he thinks, well, this is serious, I better tell my son. And he says, eh, hey, figlio, I get a letter. It's a saika that next week I'm going to go to the specialist. Be rich. Because non sento bono. And uh, that's why I go through a red light. <laughs> you know what the letter said? Your hearing has been postponed till next week. <laughs> right? It's true, right? True story, okay? But, 
But, you know, like I said, I, I spent a lot of time with my nonni, which was good. My nonna took me to her favorite bistro. She goes, we've got to go there. If he do not know, beautiful, of course, he very nice hepatitis. <laughs> what? I'm not going to a place where I'm going to get sick. My quality is sick, very nice, he just got to get part of Appetizers, nonna. <laughs> It's going to scare people into going, right? <laughs> but we go, you know, all of a sudden now, you know, Italians don't eat junk food, but all of a sudden now they like this fast food, we go to McDonald's with nonni, right? Now, the first, I don't know if you've ever been to McDonald's with your nonni or anyone from Italy, but they don't normally like junk food. The first 10 minutes, my nonno spent deconstructing the hamburger, right? <laughs> this is my nonno. Que esta porqueria? Sta crema. Sti zucchini friati qui, mi si chiede. But you want to know why we went? Because my nonna thought they were cooking Italian food. What do you mean they're cooking Italian food? Yeah, because the last time I'm go there, no? Or they're no bigger mac, cheese, burger, patatini, fries, and a Coca-Cola. Apo Aguila dice, you like the super sato with that? <laughs> super sato, super size, same thing for her, right? <laughs> and you couldn't cry, could you? You couldn't cry, that hit you. But <laughs> change. <laughs> And what would that do to stop you crying? No Tangiri. <laughs> Did you have those parents who never believed you were crying even if you were crying? No Tangiri se no venio dopo ti faccio Tangiri per davvero. I did, I spent time with my nonni, and you know, when, when you know, like I said, they're, they're the source of my material, and you know, you, you, you're away from them for a while, and you kind of forget certain things, and one thing that kind of came flashing back when I spent time with them was that Italians, well, we don't follow rules, do we? <laughs> rules, not per me, per latch, not per me. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples of how Italians don't follow rules. The first one is recycling. Right? We are no good at recycling, are we? You know why? Because we never had to practice, because we never needed to, because Nonno was the ultimate recycler. Right? Right? What would Nonno do every Sunday afternoon after lunch? He'd go outside and test the wind, wouldn't he? Mezzica, se ho vento buono figlio, bruciamo! Remember the good old days? None of this recycled bullshit. Burn everything. Not know what I do with this cardboard. Bruge, ha bruge, ha vidu bruge. What about this big ball of plastic? Ha plastic, ha na. Bruge up with plastic. Bruge it up. And now you are not allowed to burn, are you? It's no good for the environment, right? And it causes bushfires if you live in Australia. But they still have to burn. Right? Italians can't live without burning stuff, right? And, and, and they know they're not allowed to burn, right? Because, you know, the papers, the radio tells them. But what do they do? They ask us. Like, we are going to give them some sort of special city council permit <laughs> to burn. And they come up all quiet, don't they? Feed you. Yamu, yamu, bruciamo, yamu. Nessuno vede niente, yamu, yamu. What do you mean, nessuno vede niente? You're going to see all the smoke. A little bruciamo menza notti. He would get up at midnight to burn, right? The fire brigade comes every day. I keep you on a job. Another one, here's another one. Okay, again with the environment, water restrictions. Huh? How could you possibly impose water restrictions on neighborhoods where there are Italians? I told my nonna she wasn't allowed to go. No, but Essa mora nei pomodoro che faccio? (laughs) 
Folks, my nonno thinks that water restriction time is the best time to water the garden. You know why, don't you? Because no one else in the neighborhood uses the hose. And our pression is very good. <laughs> okay, the last way. The last way that Italians don't follow rules is when you go shopping with nonna. Now, I don't know if you've been shopping with nonna, right? But firstly, you get that phone call. You know that phone call? Feed you, what you do now? Ah, oh, nothing much. Okay, come and pick a nonna up. We go to the shop. No, no, we just go to, to buy quattro cose. <laughs> now, those of you laughing know. <laughs> quattro cose is a trunk full of food and six hours out of your day, right? There is no such thing as quattro cose, right? <laughs> we go to the shop about half an hour later to buy quattro cose, right? Shopping cart full, I forget something. I said, you know what, Nonna, just get in line and I'll be back. I go and get what I've got to get. I come back, I'm looking for Nonna. A shopping cart full, and where is she? In the express lane. <laughs> I go, Nonna, what are you doing here? No, this is too quick. Very good, this is too quick. Look, can't you read? Look, look, look. Eight items or less. Eight. Nine, two cars and down. Nothing. Manaya Sharap is the Zitu Venekumia. Zitu Manaya. We think our next time, non to Porto. But that was the one begging in the first place. And they were lazy too, weren't they? They were, I, had a, I had one of those dads who used to throw the slipper at me, it would hit me, he would make me pick it up, take it back to him so he could throw it at me again. <laughs> what about when they want you to help them give you a beating? Tu vai pedir mais culpa que pesto. this one, Tuveni Kakatamenu. Let's try and understand this for a second, folks. They wanted us to go to them so that they could beat us when we were supposed to be running away. And us, like idiots, what would we do? We'd go! They make good stuff. Uh, did you have to do recently the, uh, the Pumadora in the last couple of months, huh? Clap if you had to do the Pumadora in the last couple of months, yeah. That's why I came on to an now. I got away with it. <laughs> it's like a production line. Everyone's got their own little job. The whole family's involved. Everyone's got their own little job, and you know what? And they, they, they get all excited about it because then they put it into bottles and they put it into boil. And then the women go and clean and all the men get nervous because they don't know how long it's been since they're boiling. They don't know how long to keep it in there, to take it out. Man, na, quanto ci vuole poi, vi vuol, ma quando sono pomodoro, man, na, non ci sono, man, na, non ci sono, such. You know why they're anxious and they're nervous? Because they wait for that time when they've got to open up the lid. Because that is the critical point where they find out if there's any red in the water. Because you know what red in the water means, don't you? Si spaccari bottiglie! And they do a count, they put them out on the grass there like dead people, one, two, queen, they just say, caro, fever then. They start blaming, blaming the person who puts the giornale around the bottle, I don't know. Next time you got to put a two giornale, man, And everyone's got their own job. And what was our job? Putting the bus here, look. But we had to do it, it was a part of growing up. But she's cute, eh? My nonna's cute. She, um, my nonna, she doesn't have a license, but, um, <laughs> yeah, she still drives, eh? <laughs> she drives my nonna crazy. I've got one of these nonnas who is 80 years old, never even been behind, not even to sit there, but she knows how to drive, and she has to tell him how to drive. Frena. <laughs> Frena, vedi che rosso! Stop because it's dropping with you, the man now. Come on, normal. normally, with the with the college, she says, Santa stay in no tanta man now. I will see you to stop, not to catch an allegiance, if I'm no bono, huh?
But, you know what's cool about my, my nonno loves watching a lot of TV, which is good because I don't get a chance being on the road a lot. And he keeps me informed and up to date on all the events of the world and what's happening, right? He rings me up a couple of months ago because uh, you watch the news, sir. Huh? I don't understand the stick people. Which people? Karana ke lu shemu. Which shemu? Well, lu shemu the Lingalterra or Prince Charlie. And he makes fun of him, eh? You know, because of the way he looks, because he's got big ears. He calls him Ricky Parafango. And because he's got a really big nose, he goes, Sera pecora non mangiava. I said, what, what's wrong with Prince Charles? Ma, I no understand the video. Na volta and viva quella bella principessa. Adesso si sposava con questa cacchio brutta da fame. Come chiamano questa ca a camomilla. Oh, yeah, you gotta love him, eh? Because my nonno, he is, he is a crazy driver, right? And he has had some 10 major car accidents in the 30 odd years he's been in Australia, driven my nonno into houses, into fences. Um, but he got a new car. And isn't it cool when Italians get something new, they like to show you, don't they? They like to show it off. Vito. You like, eh? You like hook out of the no, no, go look, look, look. So I go, I'm in there, I'm sitting down and I see a badge, it says ABS. I go, meet second no, no, you got ABS, huh? Oh no, no. It was hatch. I go, what do you know? I don't even think you know what it means. Eh? I said, what does it mean? Eh, a bustaka stop. They like to make up their own words for acronyms, nonni, don't they? Do you know what BMW stands for for my nonno? Bella Mark and a Walion. <laughs> but then we sit down, right, and he, and he shows me his most prized possession, right? He sits down, his most prized possession, he sits in the driver's seat, right, and he explains this to me as if I've been living on Mars for the last 10 years, right? He goes, uh, you know what's in here, huh? He's pointing to the steering wheel. A pay extra. In here, if you smash, they come in a big balloon. Because in on to back a hatch. You could buy two of these balloons. One here and one here. But I just get one, it's all for me, that's it. Because I know not have a testa dura and non ci serve. <laughs> but Italian dads, eh? We can't, uh, we can't finish up without talking about the Italian dads because they're, they're a piece of work, Italian dads, eh? Oh, yeah. I had to stop taking my dad to parent-teacher night for two reasons. Number one... He knew more than the teacher. Mo questo scemo. Si chiama maestro di scuola, io so che c'è questo. Io fili solo la terza fece sa capisci che c'è questo cavo. Your dad, that's my Italian teacher. Oh. Sorry. But the other reason is I had to stop taking my dad to parent teach night because he would give permission to the teacher to hit me if I was bad. And he would blatantly tell him what to do. So if I your malo give a Then you ring on me, I give a one you. 
because we would get in trouble for anything. And what about the Italian address book? Hey, eh? the Italian address book. I don't know if you have ever gone through your nonna's address book, right? <laughs> but they have a very funny way of filing things, don't they? Right? I'm in my nonna's house, right? My car breaks down, so I go inside to see, you know, to find the mechanic, right? So I look up in the M for mechanical. No. What's the next option? C, for carro. Not there either. You know where it was? It was on the G for just our marketer. <laughs> and you want to hope you're not going to add someone with a last name starting with Z, because that page is full, isn't it? Ziangela, Zetoni, Zafranca. <laughs> You know when you were uh, driving around to Ogaru <laughs> and you listen to the songs on the radio, do you ever change them around <laughs> into Italian or Galabrisa, Sicilian or whatever you want to change them into? Like, and you can do it with bands. I do it with bands as well, like rock bands. Like, you know that rock band U2? They'd be Toboru. <laughs> you know, they, there's a great band out now called Matsandu Heidi. You know that band? <laughs> Smashing pumpkins would be spaccando cocozzi. <laughs> Metallica pezzi <petit> ferro. <laughs> and you can go on and on and on. And on. <laughs> George Michael in Calabrese, right? George Michael in Calabrese, here we go. Io pensavo che era meglio Se poteva toccare un po' di E ho sacco che no everybody Nuovo body come toi You know what I mean? I used to support the Beach Boys And I got, I got fired for singing songs like Let's go surfing now Everybody knowing how Come on, come party with me you know. Help me nonna, help, help me nonna Help me nonna, help, help me nonna Help me nonna, help, help me nonna, help me nonna, go on top of the yard. <laughs> Do you know this song? Come on, I suit and no basso. Mimenaun, no drain, no sun yenamorato, misty to to stay so. You know what I'm getting at? I mean, you could do it with anybody. I mean, you could do it with anybody. You know, remember that Shemonito Billy Ray Cyrus? Imagine if he was Galabrisi. Numerum piru cori, u cori cori cori, che io non penso che capisci. E se tu mi rompo cori, u cori cori cori, vedi che tu me hen finisci. Ora scemo. They call radio songs, I call that the radio songs. That's on the new CD too. Uh, I, you know, because a lot of music, you believe it or not, you know, I think in Calabria, uh, I don't know if any of your nonnos play guitar, but I think in Calabria there was one school, you know, one guitar teacher. <laughs> and he only knew these two chords. <laughs> That's all, you know, all the songs are made up and it's all about share cousins, don't it? <laughs> Cool. But you know, a lot of music originated in Italy, you know? You know, did you know reggae started in Calabria? <laughs> you laugh, you know Bob Marley? It was his old man, Non C'è Marley. He started everything. <laughs>
on the second album on the live and unplugged album i started talking about how music originated in italy you know like i said reggae started in calabria with bob marley and his old man on chair marley you know what i mean and uh then i went on to do the radio songs and i thought you know why don't we take a trip down memory lane and i thought i wonder if what it would be like if some of the greatest songs of all time were actually sung by italians instead of the english singers that originally sang them imagine if the beatles were calabresi <laughs> oh yeah i bitoli giorgio giovanni paolo e eh, ringolo <laughs> see if you can guess this beatles song in memory of george harrison see if you can guess this beatles song in calabresi ready here we go oh yeah yeah do they gonna cosa Speriamo che tu capisci. E Dio, ti dico una cosa. Voglio te tenere una mano. Voglio te tenere una mano. Voglio te tenere una mano. You get it? You know what I'm on about, right? I reckon the best Beatles song has got to be that of a hard day's night. Because it's all about working hard and being Italian, isn't it? A hard day's night. No duro your no sera. This is a hard day's night in Calabrese. Here we go. Duro your no sera. Sta lavorando come un cane. Duro your no sera. E mi facci troppo fame. Quando arriva a casa tu sai che voglio mangiare su po tavolo. Lavoro notte e giorno, ho fatto sordi, ho attaccato cose And I love it just to hear you say Che cucinasti pasta fagioli Quando arriva a casa tu sai che voglio mangiare su po' tavolo Right? You with me, get it? Imagine if this song was sung in Calabresi Mare la gamba, mi fa mare la gamba, o fica tu, o fica tu, fica tu, fa mare la gamba, fa mare la gamba, e o fica tu, fica tu. Who, who would be the ultimate? That's it. Elvis Presley. Bonanima. <laughs> or as my nonna calls him, Asso Presley. Imagine if Asu Presley was Calabrese. <laughs> grazie, grazie tanto. Okay, here we go. Asu Presley in Calabrese. Here we go. Don't clap on this one because you need to hear the words, right? Uno, due, uno, due, tre. Here we go. Uno, due, uno, due, tre, quattro. Uno bisordi, tu puscio. Trio teni pronto e diamo, 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 ma no. Patacari, scarpe blu. Vai chiedo che vuoi, ma non toccari, scarpe blu. Mira me lo pugno, mira me ta facci, dimmi che tutti sono pacci, dimmi chiedo, chiedo che vuoi, oh 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 oh, non toccari, non toccari scarpe blu, 
Fai che cazzo vuoi ma non toccare i scarpe blu What is it about Italian kids that we are genetically prone to getting sicknesses and diseases that no other kid of any other nationality ever got? Why is it that you can get some Canadian kid to play outside in the freezing cold for three hours with half the amount of clothes that we have on, yet we can't go because we're going to get our bronchiti polmonite? <laughs> And you feel like an idiot. Your friend comes up and wants you to play, knocks on the door, your mum answers, Hello? You want a job? Pep, you think it's your amigo? You think it's your friend? You think it's your friend? It's not a match. And you're like, oh, I can't come, I'm gonna get a bronchiti. <laughs> we're always, like, we were, they were always gonna kill us. We were always on death row, weren't we? We were always waiting to die. Right, what about when your mum says, Quando arriva a casa, tua patria ti ammazza. All day you were waiting because you know you were going to die. And that knot comes up to you and you're cooking, cleaning, ironing, washing, doing everything possible to make it up. And halfway through she says, Tu pensi che mi sperdia? <laughs> then she tells you how he's going to kill you. Ta scanna quando arriva tua pazza. 